Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2017 and this experiment where we take a look at what would happen if the top four leagues in Europe released every player on their books. Now in the last three parts to this experiment we took a detailed look at the first year's transfers for the big teams in the four league uh, leagues and who they brought in after so many players were released and the really startling thing was the fact that very few players were actually taken on and the teams that dominated the leagues were the ones or the few ones that had actually gone out there and really splashed out on some quality players now Roma were one example of that um, and they won the league by bringing in a lot of great players that other teams just weren't picking up we're now five years into this experiment. Last time we checked in, we went one year ahead. Now we've gone another four, taking us to five years in total. So most players will now have been picked up and will have gone to a new club. So we're going to have a look at the leagues, where the teams are now, if they've managed to bring in any extra players, um, and also have a quick look at the Champions League. So there's a lot to get through. So we'll start with Serie A, where if we have a look at the stages for this league and drop back to that first season 16-17 when Roma did win the league by quite some way the next year um, they won it again two points clear of AC Milan Juventus in third um, the following year Juventus managed to come back and win the title Roma and Milan still in the top three and a bit of a gap between them and the teams below them um, and then the following year, again, Juventus retain their title, but Napoli break into the top three. AC Milan missed out by one point. Uh, no real surprises elsewhere. And then last season, Inter Milan come from nowhere and managed to win the league ahead of Napoli. Juventus, Roma and AC Milan completely falling down. Um, but a but uh, the Italian league still only getting three Champions League places. Now, if we have a look at the transfers, um, I'm not really sure that's the best way to look at it because we're looking for the free transfers. What might be better is if you take a quick look at the big teams and go back through the years. You can see that they've signed Roberto Firmino from Lyon, uh, Rico from Man City, uh, and Mathieu from Club Bruges. Um, lots of players leaving on free transfers, uh, which is a bit interesting, actually. There's so many players leaving on free transfers, but I guess they're youngsters. The year before that, very little money spent bringing in Ely, Brahimi, and Serge Aurier. Uh, before that, Rosales, Popovic, Danchu, and Tazino. And before that, Borgia and Borg. All of their free transfers came in the first season, so they didn't actually pick up anybody else on free transfers, which is a little bit crazy that, given how many quality players were still on freeze, Roma didn't get a single one of them. Uh, if we have a look at Juventus, another team that did very well, uh, and have a quick look at their transfer history, starting with that first season when they brought in quite a lot of players on free transfers the following season again nobody coming in on a free transfer a few good players coming though Bruno Fernandes from West Ham Marquisio in there as well um, but just no free transfers coming in they did pick up Isco from PSG though which is something um, and finally let's have a quick look at AC Milan the other team to have done well uh, if we look at their transfer history and go back to that first season. They didn't sign too many players on free transfers. They spent money, or a little bit of money anyway. Um, but the following season, they did bring in a couple of free transfers, including Manuel Lanzini. Uh, so evidence that some clubs are actually signing players, but very little money spent. The following year, uh, not too much money spent yet. Again, Poulsen coming in, the big transfer, and Sarabia from Verona. And then the year after that, Again, no major transfers, but a decent amount spent and no more free transfers. And then last season, again, very little money spent. So interesting that none of the big teams in Italy picked up players on free transfers. Now, if we have a look at the German first division, which has slipped down to fifth place in the rankings, which is quite interesting, um, and drop back to their first year. We can see in the league table, Dortmund won the title the first year and the second year as well, but Bayern recovered from a low of sixth up to second place. A bit of a gap then between them and the rest of the league. Uh, again, Dortmund winning a third consecutive title ahead of Bayern. Another big gap between the rest of the teams. Same the year after, but Bayern slipping much further back, just one point ahead of Schalke. Dortmund runaway winners. 
But then finally, Bayern overhauled Dortmund after four consecutive titles and managed to win at the Bundesliga with Schalke again in third place. So only really three teams to take much of a look at here. Uh, Bayern are the first ones. You can see they spent a lot of money last season. Julian Brandt coming in from Dortmund, the big one. Uh, but Markovic from Porto as well. The year before that, uh, no major big names in there. Milik coming in and Arias from Inter, £100 million spent, £114 million the year before that. Uh, Jeffrey in Adelaide coming in, Rudiger coming in from um, Al Hilal, uh, must have gone there after being released. Ilke Gundogan coming in from Leicester, uh, they must have picked him up as well. Um, and the year before that, well, they did sign Zapata on a free, but that was it. Uh, Timo Horn coming in from Hertha, uh, but that's kind of it really there wasn't the biggest transfer window for them and the year before that they got a few players in on free so Bayern did start to recover eventually but the big transfer team were Dortmund right from the start you can see how many free transfers they brought in they built an incredible squad in their first year the following year spent 82 million pounds on players including Inaki Williams from Porto uh, and Ian Acho as well from Levante a couple of players there and Andre Schürrle on the free transfer following season another player on a free transfer but they also got Brandt from Fenerbahce Nelson Semedo from Benfica Ricardo Rodriguez in on loan uh, which is interesting um, and then a few other players not the biggest names the following year they bought Baba Raman in who was at Manchester United um, and Sebastian Louth as well um, but again, I'm really interested at who's been picking up these free transfers. It looks like it's not all that clean cut and it's not the biggest teams doing it. Um, now, Schalke also did reasonably well, so we'll very quickly go through theirs. Um, no major players there. They did sign Kevin Trapp from PSG, but PSG managed to hang on to all their players and sign an awful lot of very good ones. Uh, the year before that, Jonathan Caleri coming in, Terence Congolo from Feyenoord. Um, and then the year before that, the 16-17 season, was the season they got a lot of players on free transfers. So that's the kind of German league done up. You can see how they've fallen from second at the start of this experiment down to fifth, really struggling. Uh, so they must be doing poor in Europe. Now, Liga are the team, that, the league that has really dominated. And you can see PSG winning all of the titles here. And there's a reason for that, and it's their transfer history. The first season, look at the players they brought in. Pogba, Oblak, Busquets. De Bruyne, Carvajal, Romagnoli, Bonucci, Iwobi, Alaba, Rodriguez, Mkhitaryan and ba Bailey. That is an incredible, incredible uh, list of players to have signed in one season. Uh, no Neymar on there, but not a bad result overall. The following season, they picked up Gonzalo Higuain from uh, Gang Zhao for £70 million as well. Kovalenko from Shakhtar. Uh, the year after that, Alexis Sanchez in from, Chelly, uh, from Chelsea for £56 million. Bakayoko from AS Monaco. Isco from Chelsea as well. Completely raiding Chelsea of their best players. But £171 million spent. 114 the following season. Laporte coming in. Um, they've just absolutely smashed it on the transfer side of things. Uh, bringing in huge sums of money as well as buying a lot of players. Chancellor Mbemba from Man City for 8.75 million. Moise Keane from Juventus as well. Uh, and Guerrero coming in from Arsenal. So PSG did very, very well. AS Monaco also benefiting massively from this. Um, you can see that they signed Alexandro, Sergio Aguero from Shanghai for just £11 million, and Rob Agnoli from PSG for 16.25. Uh, some of these players going very cheaply. Romelu Lukaku, 18 million from Fenerbahce, uh, and Kaita Balde from Southampton, which is where he ended up. And then in their first season, you can see they signed some very, very good players on free transfers. So the French league doing very well, currently up to third, but I could see them climbing even higher than that as this goes forward. Then you've got the um, La Liga which at the moment won by Real Madrid, but if we drop back to their first year, which was won by Valencia, the shock winners there, Barcelona in fourth place. The following year, Real Madrid managed to re-establish the order. Barcelona finishing second, Valencia down in fourth. And the year after that, again, Real Madrid taking the title nearly 100 points. And the year after that, and the year after that. So Real Madrid have established themselves as the top team in Spain once again. Still got Carlo Ancelotti in charge. You can see in their first season, they did sign quite a few good players. Um, but didn't really do that much with them. The following year, um, 
They brought in Soriano, Idrissa Gay and Konoplyanka all on free transfers. So they're one team who did bring people in. But they also signed Bernardo Silva for £90 million, which is a huge amount. Uh, the following year, Xiao Martino joined them on a free from Monaco. A couple of players from PSG uh, and Christiansen from Southampton. Uh, a year after that, Thomas Lamarin completing their snapping up of the best attacking midfielders at Monaco. Uh, Asensio in there as well, re-signing him from Lyon. Dominic Berardi coming in, Jean Matip as well. And Juan Mata, who was actually at Norwich, which is quite funny. Uh, and then the following season, £87 million on Anti Martial from Spurs, including Diego Costa as well from Spurs. Mamana joining them too. Barcelona, the other big team in Spain, um, they've picked up Dybala from Liverpool, is, which is where he ended up. £108 million spent on him. They also brought in Fabinho and Cranevitter. The year before that, Ruben Neves from Porto. Romelu Lukaku, uh, who Monaco snapped up quite cheaply, but then signed by Barcelona for £78 million. Uh, Yedvai in there as well. £190 million spent this year on quite a lot of players. A uh, year before that, like Aubameyang from Man United. Sacco from Barry. Daily Blint from Barry as well. Barry getting raided. Grimaldo and uh, Samaras also being picked up. Uh, Coke was signed for a free. That was a year after the big free transfer splurge, as was um, Matic and Moses. So they did well that year, but also spent £100 million on top of that on some very, very good players, including Christian Benteke from Arsenal, which is definitely an interesting sign in Nastasic coming in as well. So Barcelona and Real Madrid are really re-establishing their position at the top by just going on a huge spending spree, but they've lost their top spot in Europe to England. Now, what's been happening in the Premier League? And first off, you can see something big there. But back in the 16-17 season, it was Arsenal and Spurs flying out at the top, but it was so tight. Three teams, just four points in it, all over 90 points. The following season, Liverpool won the title four points clear of Arsenal, reversing that order, basically, with uh, Spurs dropping down to third. The following year, Liverpool again retaining the title ahead of City and then Spurs and United Arsenal missing out in Champions League. Chelsea struggling at the minute. United did manage to win the title from Liverpool, three points ahead. And then Spurs and Arsenal behind them. City and uh, Chelsea really struggling in this league now um, until last season when they both managed to move up into second and third with Spurs, United and Arsenal all dropping out. Um, so Liverpool have got to be the team we look at first. They've done brilliantly winning three titles in four years um, and starting in their first season uh, when they brought in a lot of good players, which is why they did so well in the league, bringing in Dybala and Lewandowski and Hazard and Ali. Brilliant signings there. The following year, they carried that on with more free transfers. They'd only spent 40 million quid uh, or 60 million quid in their first two seasons and brought in brilliant players, including Kimmich, Salah, Martinez and Piaka from Spurs. Um, and then they got Thiago and Angel Di Maria both into the club. The following year, they got Mbappe from Monaco for nearly 63 million. Uh, Leno coming in, Munir, Sanchez, Red Bull Salzburg being raided a bit, and Hamshik from Verona for just £4 million pounds is quite a coup. The following year, uh, Granit Xhaka joining the club, Lucas Vazquez coming in, um, and Jordi Amat as well. Uh, £100 million pounds spent then um, as Liverpool retained their title, or won their title back from Manchester United, the other team to have won the title in this period. Um, for them, last year or this season, they brought in a couple of players from Dortmund, Semedo and Williams, very good players there. Um, year before that, Diego Jota coming in, uh, but not a massive amount of money spent, just £57 million. The year before that, they did finally get Victor Lindelof in, who they've obviously signed in real life this summer. Diego Lorente, the big signing in from uh, Saint-Etienne, but Jordan Shakiri coming in too. Uh, Tony Cruz on a free transfer and Jasper Silas and those are the two extra free transfers that they made. Edison Cavani from PSG quite cheap and Jordi Alba getting snapped up from Lyon as well. You can see this has redistributed the finances quite well because clubs like Lyon have now made a fortune from selling players uh, to the bigger clubs so it's redistributing the money through the football system. Now Spurs were the other team to have won the title. They won it in the very first season currently managed by um, Zinedine Zidane. And you can see the number of players that they brought in on freeze and how good they are, which is why they won the title. But they continued that the following season. Finally, somebody picked up Luis Suarez, getting him on a free transfer uh, after a year out of the game. He's still on 200 grand a week now and still at Spurs. Uh, but they also got Diego Perotti and Rafinha in. The following year, Danilo, Eurotielemans, Lovren, Diego Costa. Um, 
and then a few other good players including Isaac Success who was at Napoli um, and then this season Philip Coutinho came in after being at St. Etienne for presumably four years uh, and Eric Lamella who was at Monterey uh, which is quite interesting so they did pick up some decent players but the transfers are very interesting at this point um, we've already had a look at Manchester United if we have a look at maybe Manchester City the other club with a lot of money um, last season spent 74 million on some players that I don't recognise too much but they didn't sign anybody the year before that presumably because of financial fair play 96 million spent the year before 141 the year before that including re-signing Raheem Sterling on a free transfer Divock Origi in there as well Aspilicueta from Porto that's another player that Leon have managed to sell on for a huge profit um, and then the year before that they signed all of these great players but didn't do a lot with them um, Finally, let's have a look at Arsenal, um, who've been struggling really since this started. In their first season, they signed some decent players, um, and you would have expected them to do better than they have done. They also picked up Phil Jones on a free, Ardona Silva in there as well. Uh, a few players, including Ed Hughes from Bristol City. Uh, then Julian Draxler on a quite cheap fee. Uh, Mendy, the left back from Monaco, for 24.5 million. Um, but not the biggest transfers there and then I think I forgot to have a look at Chelsea um, so last season for them 54 million spent on some interesting players uh, 23 million for Brendan Galloway who was at Hearth and Berlin that's an interesting one um, other big players 100 million pounds spent they signed Alex Murray from Udinese that's a good transfer I am Robin from Quan Jan rejoining them he must have been quite old at that point Jack Wilshire from Celtic for 8 million pounds uh, Kondogbia from Braga they did get Isco on a free the following year from the big um, big purge of players in their contracts but the first season they also picked up Alexis Sanchez so that's the Premier League um, if we have a look at Liverpool and their competitions overview um, then we can get easy access to uh, the cup competitions in England and if we have a look at the past winners of the FA Cup Arsenal, Liverpool, City um, Spurs are all in there not a massive surprise though. I think actually if we just jump straight into the European Champions Cup and have a look at the stages overview for this competition going back to the first season. We haven't seen any of the past winners here. So if we start at the court final stage of the first season, you can see Arsenal, Juventus, Real Madrid and PSG all making it to the semi-finals. Kiev and Lyon did well to reach this point. In the semi-finals, Juventus and Arsenal made the final and it was eventually won by Arsenal, finally winning the Champions League following the excellent players that they snapped up in that first season. The following year, uh, a few more interesting teams in there. Bill Bow, Sporting, Roma all making that point. Spurs as well. And there's actually three English teams that made the semi-finals with Sporting Lisbon. In the semis, Arsenal and Spurs made it to the final. Um, and in the North London derby, it was won by Spurs, stealing Arsenal's Champions League crown and making the most of the players that they brought in. The following year, Juventus, Real Madrid, Roma and Monaco went through, but a re-establishment of the main order of European clubs there. No real surprises in there. Uh, and Monaco and Real Madrid actually made the final quite comprehensively, uh, which was won by Real Madrid, denying Monaco that Champions League crown. The following year, again, Bayern, Real Madrid, Liverpool and City all going through. No real surprises. So it hasn't massively shaken up the natural order uh, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich the two teams going through and in the final Bayern managed to win at the Champions League and then this season just gone um, we can see Juventus Liverpool Real Madrid Bayern again the big clubs in there good to see Leon in there given the number of players that they sold uh, in the semis Real Madrid and Juventus repeating the final we saw this year and Real Madrid did win it three goals to nil so history repeating itself a little bit there at the Millennium Stadium as well in Cardiff um, brilliant stuff that that's the venue that that's happened um, because that is a literally a repeat of this year's Champions League final um, so yeah I'm going to leave it there I think for this experiment um, or this part of this experiment at least. I hope you found that interesting. Do drop a like on the video if you did find it interesting and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more from this experiment. I can maybe go five or ten years ahead into the future if you're interested in that but let me know down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. You can also follow me on Twitter if you don't already. Links are in the description but until next time, see ya!